when we turn to the cal in the perfect you will see that first guttural verbs follow a normal pattern the only exception is the case of the second masculine plural and second feminine plural where typically you would have a vocal schwa underneath the first letter when that first letter is a guttural that schwa becomes as expected a compound schwa so compare the paradigm that you know the cal perfect of catal to the paradigm of the cal perfect of a first guttural verb amad from catal we have catal Katala, Katalta, Katalt, Katalti, Katalu, Kutaltim, Kutaltin, Katalnu. With Ahmad, we have almost the exact same thing. Ahmad, Amada, Ahmadta, Ahmad, Ahmadti, Amadu, Ahmadtim, Ahmadtin, Ahmadnu. So the only change in the cal perfect is the presence of the compound schwa under the first guttural letter. With the imperfect, on the other hand, the presence of the imperfect's prefix places the guttural letter into a position where it would normally take a schwa. So if you consider katal, you have yiktol, tiktol, tiktol, Tiktali, ektol, yiktalu, tiktolna, tiktalu, tiktolna, and niktol. With amad, almost always you will see then the compound schwa. Ya amod, ta amod, ta amod, ta amdi, e amod. Ya amdu, ta amodna, ta amdu. Ta'amodna and Na'amod. Note a couple features. First, the voweling of the first common singular is an E class vowel, both for the prefix letter, the Aleph, and the compound schwa under the first root letter. Second, you'll note that for three forms, the second feminine singular and the third masculine plural and the second masculine plural, that you have a full vowel under the guttural, in this case the ion. This is an application of the rule of schwa that you learned in chapter 6. Remember in Hebrew that if two vocal schwas would occur in a row, the first of them becomes the corresponding, becomes a hirak or a corresponding short vowel. The second becomes a silent vowel. So the working here is that the second feminine singular form would have originally, you might think, become ta, a, m, d. However, because these are still technically two vocal schwas in a row, even though the first is compound, this becomes ta, am, d. According to the rule of schwa, the compound schwa becomes a full short vowel of the same vowel class, a patak, and then the second schwa becomes silent. The other thing you will notice in the imperfect is that the vowel under the prefix is typically a patak, the short a vowel. This is because of this fourth tendency of gutturals, their tendency that their compound schwa will color the sound of the vowel that precedes them. For example, consider Ezekiel 27:29. Kol hovale hayam el haaretz yaamodu. So in this case, yaamodu is the cal imperfect third common third masculine plural of amad. The presence of the guttural, the compound schwa under the guttural causes the prefix vowel to have a patak, a corresponding A sound. Likewise, 1 Kings 23.3, Vaya'amod ha'melech el ha'amud. You see again, you have a compound schwa under the first guttural. This is a cal narrative 
third masculine singular of Ahmad, and that causes a corresponding short vowel under the prefix letter, the yod, vaya amod. This tendency then means that commonly with first guttural verbs, you will have a vowel pattern at the beginning of the word of a patak followed by a hatef patak. As we've been looking, ya amod, he will stand. You can, however, have other combinations, for example, sagol followed by hatef sagol, yechazak, he will be strong. In general, the patterns will be this. If the stem vowel is a holum, then the prefix vowel will be patak, and you will have the combination patak by hatef patak, as in ya'amod. If the stem vowel, as in yechazak, is a patak, then the prefix vowel will typically be a sagol, yechazak. For example, 2 Kings 8.12, uvhurehem, Bacherev, Taharog. So Taharog here is the verb. You, masculine singular, will kill in the imperfect. Because it's a, it's a holum theme vowel under, over the resh, then you get the combination Patak followed by Hatef Patak. On the other hand, Isaiah 28.22, Pen Yechzaku, Mosarechem, lest your chastisements be stronger. In this case, the verb is yechezaku. You have chazak as the root form. And because chazak would typically take a patak theme vowel, you have a segol in the prefix vowel. Numbers 21.16, Amar Adonai le Moshe, Esof et Ha'am. Esof is the verb gather, a cal imperative. And if the verb is first aleph, so a subset of first gutturals, typically first aleph verbs will have a holum prefix vowel, as in Yo kalu, they will eat. Kal imperfect, third masculine plural of the root akal, to eat. This pattern should already be familiar because we have regularly seen the form vayomer in the narrative. Consider Psalm 1 6. Ki yodea Adonai derek sadikim, vaderek rushasim. Toved. Toved is the cal imperfect third feminine singular of avad, the root to perish. And as a first aleph verb, it takes a holum prefix vowel. In Exodus 16.33, Vayomer Moshe el Acharon kat sinsenet achat. Vayomer, the narrative form, as it comes from Amar, a first aleph verb, has a holum vowel. Most other forms in the cal are regular because the guttural being the first letter of the verbal form would not have a, com a vocal schwa under it. These include the cal perfect, the active participle, the passive participle, the converted perfect, and the infinitive absolute. For instance, Genesis 12, 12. Vayahi ki yeru otak ha mitzrim. Vayamaru ishto zot vaharku oti. Vayamaru is a cal converted perfect third common plural of Amar. However, because the guttural is in the first position and it is following a simple vocal schwa, it has a full vowel. With the full vowel, no change occurs. Another example in Joel 11.1, ki avad kutsir sadeh, for the harvest of the field has perished. 
Avad is a calperfect third masculine singular of Avad. In this case, because the guttural is the first letter, and in the calperfect it has a full vowel underneath it, no change occurs. In general, you should have very little trouble identifying first guttural cal forms, so long as you remember that gutturals prefer a compound schwa.